let's have a look at the other part of this technique. Um, in in the last session, I showed you a sequence that you can where you can change strings without using your first finger, or uh, where you can use the second, the third, and the fourth because these are really good at tapping. Uh, usually, uh, the first finger doesn't do tapping very much, so this is a new thing that you have to develop. And there's really not that much to it. I'm going to explain to you exactly how to practice it, how to get it right, what to focus on. And if you do what I say, and you use the metronome, get in front of the TV, focus on it each night for a week, then you'll already discover that this is actually not as hard as it may look to some. I'm using the three note per, st per string blue scale. And I'm actually able to play that with my, with my left hand only, so I don't need to tap it. It's not that far a stretch. But the whole uh, game here is to really develop this as a style of playing. And you do that by just imagining that this is the only th way you can play the guitar. Of course, you can do your chords and you can do strumming, but every time you play something uh, solo-like, then you use this technique. And once you're at a certain level, you can simply just drop all other techniques, put on a jam track, and then practice soloing like this. Another thing is that when you practice this very much, you tend to get blisters on your fingers, on your right hand fingers, and to some extent on your first finger here, because it has to do a new thing it's not used to. Let me now shut up, and let's move on to the close-up video, and I'll just show you this little thing that we heard in the beginning. <laughs> So let's look a little bit on how to do ascending runs using tapping only, uh, because this is of course a a different discipline than than you know using your pick to to start every string off. When you do a legato technique, uh, then when you go from string to string, you just you know pick that string the first time, and then you let your left hand fingers do the rest. But in this case, we're using the first hand uh, or the first finger to go from string to string. And it's not used to that because it's just, just used to fretting notes and not hammering them on. And this seems unbelievably uh, awkward in the beginning to hammer on notes with the first finger. But once you get a hang of it, and I'm talking just a couple of hours with just, you know, a simple exercise like I'm going to show you in a second, then suddenly if you focus on that first finger tap, you will you really uh, get there very fast. And, it, you know, a couple of days, a week of practicing it, over and over again, and it starts. It starts actually. Fe it feels like it's natural at some point, like you've been doing it forever, because your other fingers have been doing this. Uh, it's very likely that they have anyway. So, so what you do is you simply learn to tap, or you just do it. You just tap with your first finger, tap with the uh, with the tip here, and not this part. You don't want to tap with this flat part of the finger. You want to tap with this because this is hard and much easier to control. But it demands of you more precision. So you have to be really accurate when you hit the string um, to get it just right behind the fret and then with your, the tip of your finger. So that's what, you know. And then, of course, when you tap the note, you have to move your finger away from the fretboard. When you're just fretting it, it doesn't matter how far you move it. But when you're tapping it, in the beginning, it's a really good idea to 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 exaggerate uh, that movement there. Um, what we're going to do is to focus on the A blues scale, but we're going to play it as a three note per string blues scale. So we have, instead of having two notes and then three notes, then two, then three, we're just going to lay it out three notes per string, and you can do that with almost any scale. Uh, three notes right there. So you have the A, you have the C in the eighth fret, and the D in the 10th fret. So that's the first shape you have. And you, now you might say, oh, that's stretching. But it's really not that hard. And if this is too much stretching for you, you can just you know, play, play the same lick in a uh, minor scale where you have three note per strings. So you might go for a normal uh, minor or diatonic, uh, whatever you want to call that scale. But you, and then and then just learn to play the scale by tapping instead of using this this uh, blue scale here. But the cool thing about this is that we're actually not stretching because we drop that. Uh, what we do here is we just imagine that we have six fingers on our hand. That's really the whole 
foundation, the whole basis of what we're doing here. We just, well, we just go back and say, okay, what if we had six fingers and we could just stretch this finger away from the other? That's the fact. That's what we can do here. And that gives us a ton of options uh, that we can utilize. So um, I place my first finger in the first fret. We're just going to play, play the blue scale up the fretboard here. Then I have my fourth finger in the eighth fret, and then I'm tapping in the tenth on the low E string. So the first thing is, of course, to tap that note with your first finger. And I should say that muting is a, a thing and a skill in and of itself. So in the beginning, it's a good idea to just take a sock or a stocking, just tie it around your neck uh, so you can get some some uh, piece to practice this. And it's a really good idea to do it. You don't have to use it forever, but in the beginning when you're doing this, it's good to have that challenge. Just remove that challenge of the strings going like that. Um, so, also a very good idea to, to practice this without distortion because Stanley Jordan style, so you really have to, you know, focus on getting the notes right. But so fifth, eighth, and tenth on the low E string. Then we go to the A string. We have the sixth, the seventh, and the tenth on that A string. So these are the frets right there. And that is our three note per string: one, two, three, one, two, three, shape on two strings. And then I'm just repeating that uh, pattern up the fretboard. I'm just starting one octave higher. So we had the A there. We also have an A there, two frets up, two strings down. So in the seventh fret, I can do the same thing. I can do seven, 10, and 12. And then I have that structure, the exact same structure I had on the low E string. I'm playing the same thing now. The same combination of notes just on the two middle strings starting from the seventh fret. So that would be 7, 10, and 12 on the D string. And then on the G string, it would be uh, 8, 9, and 12. So you have the same shape, but just on the two middle strings and two uh, frets higher. Then we go th uh, three frets higher up to the B string, and we have the same um, combination of notes here. Do the same thing. So it's 10, 13, and 15th fret, and on a B string, right? And on the high E string, you have the 11th, the 12th, and the 15th. And the exercise in the beginning is just to play this scale up and down. Uh, what you can do is you can start with, with just going back and forth on the two lower strings. So you simply just go six notes up and then six notes down. Hammer on the first, fourth finger, first finger. And then you go to... Hammer on in the 6th fret, 7th, tap in the 10th, then pull off, and pull off, and then tap down here, next note right on the low E string in the 10th, then pull that off, down to that one, and then pull off, down to the 1st. Now these little pull offs, tapping, pull off to this, pull off to that, are very important, that's the whole point of this, because what often happens is people, or myself included, they they think they go, oh my god, that was all that was almost like you know the the fastest. It almost sounded right, and because it's it's relatively easy to get a result that sounds something like what you want, we mistake it for being easy, which is not. But it's the last you know two centimeters up to the result from you know the first thing is relatively easy to learn, but it's the two millimeters that that or centimeters that really make the whole difference and and those that last little level lies in whether or not you're actually pulling off when you're supposed to pull off or whether you're actually tapping when you're supposed to tap and and you don't want your brain to go over, as I said, or as I talked about, into this mode where you are just fretting the notes instead of tapping or pulling off. So you really, in the beginning, have to just study every single thing you do. Tap, tap, effectively, you know, move your fingers out here. Tap it, tap it, tap, tap, or hammer on, and then there, and then pull off. Pull off, tap, pull off, and pull off. 
Also, some people say, oh, well, you can just tap the whole thing. You can just... Like, whatever. I don't know who, who's the... Um, but, but that's actually a, a quite a bit harder to just... And it doesn't sound as fluent and as great as, as, as the other. In my perspective, from my perspective, uh, you might find the technique... I can't remember who, who used that uh, very much right now. But anyway, just remember the details. And then what you do, once you're done or tired of, of playing back and forth down here on the two lower strings, you go to the middle strings. Just play back and forth. And then once you are tired of playing on the two middle strings, you just do the same thing. Steady does it. As uh, as we say in Britain, uh, <laughs> I heard that in the Postman Pat uh, show. <laughs> but so, but that's really wise words here. Steady does it. So you just go with rhythm, the exact same amount of time in between each note. Because when you're using this kind of technique, other. There will, there will be stuff that is much easier than the other stuff. For instance, changing strings. And if you're practicing very ineffectively, practicing very ineffectively, you are changing the, the pace of what you do. So you play the easier parts faster, you play the uh, harder parts slower. So you go... And you don't want to do this. This is absolutely forbidden. <laughs> so keep a steady tempo. And then once you 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 are you know bored of go back and forth like that in these six note shape, uh, you can begin to cross over and go from you know more rapidly from one to the other, and then practice the shifts here, and uh, you know from from one six note shape to another. We have three of the same shapes here, but what about in between? But in between the G string. From one shape to another, I have a, an interesting little shift there where I have to move my hand pretty much. And then look for the notes because we have a very horizontal shape here. Look for where to put your finger when you shift from one string to another. For instance, here on the B string, I'm going all the way down to the 12th fret and then I'm uh, moving my two fingers down here. So I'm trying to lock in that image in my mind. So I, I really know the shift between this string and that string. So that's really how to practice it. Um, what we're going to do now is to just add one little thing to this one. So we can, we can do a sequence that sounds uh, a little more impressive than... So we can add a little detail to that because we don't often, very often, we don't need much. We just need one little variation to be able to create a lick that you can actually improvise with. Uh, you can do you can go back and forth do, do, doing this variation when you when you feel like it. Um, so let's just look at it. Let's um, do the middle two strings here. What you do is you just go up like you're used to. But once you get to that point, now I'm in the 7th, uh, the 10th, and the 12th fret on the D string, and I'm in the 8th, the 9th, and the 12th fret on the G string. So I'm in that middle shape there. So I'm just tapping my way all the way, remembering this first finger tap. So I'm at the top now, so I go... I go right back again as if I wanted to return to the first note again. So I go back on the G string. See if you can get that. But then I stop it. I don't go all the way down. I go... When I tap, I introduce a new note in the scale. I tap the, the 14th fret, just a whole tone over the highest note in our little six note shape here. I tap that.
and then I go down to this again, so I go... Let me play that slowly over and over again. And over again. So on that G string it says... That's the first thing you do when you get to the G string. Then you go tap that note in the 14th fret and then do the same thing again. Just up and down three notes from that note in the 8th fret. So, And you can actually circle this little lick on that and you might find this very, um, very familiar. You stay on that string and then go down once in a while. So you have a little cool lick there, and you can of course do it up here as well. Um, so that's about it. Uh, did I play that slowly enough for it? Let me just play that one more time very slowly. It's actually quite hard playing it, playing it that slow. But I hope to get the the uh, the drift here. Or otherwise, you can look in the PDF. Um, but that's that's about it. So now you have a way of getting from a lower note to a higher note, and then you can combine it with your uh, th this other. In the beginning, there, I, I think that all I really did was to just come come up from. That was the, the trick, really. Um, I just played the, the whole scale. And then that other sequence down. But now you can improvise on your way up. You can go... So I'm going to tap this out for you. Uh, so you'll have one with just you know going down and then up using the other sequence and then where you, you take a stop and then improvise just a little bit uh, so <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.